Today I'm going to be showing off my first attempt at harvesting and washing yeast. Start off by boiling a few mason jars. I've got four 8 ounce jars and two 24 ounce jars. Probably more than I need, but I figure I'd rather have more than less. We're going to boil the jars for about 20 minutes, and that's going to sterilize everything as well as drive off some dissolved oxygen that might still be in the water. After the 20 minutes, we're going to use our tongs and remove the jars, keeping uh, them pretty full of the hot water. We're going to put the hot lid on the jars so that that way when we cool everything down, the water and the inside of the jars still remains sterile even after cooling. After about two minutes or so, the lids will be cooled down enough you can touch them. So screw them on tight and then we'll move them to the refrigerator and let them cool down overnight. It's now the next morning and we're siphoning the beer from the primary to the secondary. And you can see a funnel in the sanitizer to the right there. This primary has been about two weeks at 68 degrees, no cold crash or anything. And you can see the yeast has settled out nicely. This is the yeast that we're going after to harvest. We want to get as much beer as possible off the yeast, so towards the end of the siphoning here, I find it helps to put a piece of wood under one side of the fermenter. Now you can see that since all the beer has been siphoned off, we're left with nothing but a nice pile of yeast and maybe just minuscule amounts of beer left. So we're going to take the sanitized funnel and just put it in the top now. Here's the jars of sterile water from last night. It's actually way more water than I'm going to use. I'm actually only just going to use one 24 ounce jar and even that's going to be a bit much. Once the water's all in there, I'm going to take the funnel out, put it back in the sanitizer, and gently uh, swirl the yeast around, get it all up in suspension, then I'm going to pour it out into this jar. Again, the 24 ounces of water was a bit much, so I'm going to have some left over. If I were to do this again, I'd probably put in about maybe 15 ounces of water or so, get a thicker yeast solution, then just only use this one 24 ounce jar. After it's full, I'm going to put the cap back on and give it a good shake so that all the yeast particles break up and it can settle out nice and evenly. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes now and you can see the separation that we've achieved. There's this very thin, darker layer of dead cells and debris at the bottom. Going all the way up to the top, you can see a darker, more liquid layer. And then all throughout the middle, that's the good yeast that we're trying to go after. Looking at the bottom of the jar, you can see a little more detail of that nasty stuff that we've settled out. We don't want that. Now all that's left to do is transfer the yeast from the large jar that we used to wash it into the four smaller 8 ounce jars that we're going to be storing the yeast in. Uh, remember that all this is still sterile. You want to try and keep everything as clean as possible. This is a final view of everything I've collected and again this was using only 24 ounces of sterile water in the carboy. So you can see that obviously I've got too much here so next time I do this I'm going to again use a lot less water. Now all the jars go into the fridge and that's where they're going to stay. This is two hours later. You can see nice separation. We've got good clean yeast on the bottom. It's still a little cloudy fluid on top, but all that will clear out certainly over the next few days. And we can uh, just keep this in the fridge until we need to make our next starter.